to you, O God, Lord. And Father, right now we're about to hear your word. I pray, God, that your word not fall, O God, on by the wayside, O God. Let it not fall among the thorns, O God, Lord. But I pray, God, let it fall on good ground. And help us, O God, to have stronger faith in you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Alright, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. There's one thing that is very important to me. We talk about God's saving power, His power to save. We preach salvation. We work out to save people. We talk about God's healing power, that God can heal disease, He can heal sickness, He can do anything. But there's one power that we don't dwell on. There's one power that we don't talk about a whole lot. And given the opportunity to be here tonight, about your 10-year anniversary of being born again, it's important that we talk about God's keeping power. God is able to keep you. God is able to hold you. God is able to allow you to be who it is that he called you to be. In spite of everything. Just for a few minutes. Very few minutes. Let me bring you to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Uh, in chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, I'll be reading, starting in verse number 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. And this is what I want you to hear, verse 5 who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. God, what are you may be seated. I know that when I was a young Christian, I didn't know everything I needed to know. I didn't do everything I was supposed to do. There's no... Let's not even try to think that I was trying to do everything that I was supposed to do. I wanted to be a Christian. I did my best to be a Christian. But all my efforts fell short. I was a young Christian mess. I was a young Christian mess. I was a young man living out here in this world. And the world in my day was nothing compared to what you have to deal with. But once again, trying to be a Christian and living as a Christian now, you get to see the power of God more because it's more evil and more wicked out there right now than it was then. And if you can be a Christian now, you know that there's a God. You know that there's a God. I tried, I prayed, I would go to the altar every Sunday because I felt dirty, I felt bad, I knew I sinned during the week, and every Sunday I was at the, at the altar. Every time they said, raise your hand if you're not sure if you're a Christian. Raise, come up to the front if you, if you want to get sick. I would come up to the front because I just didn't feel right. And I knew I was a Christian. The devil wasn't taking that from me. I knew that I was a Christian, but I felt real bad about my sins. I felt real bad about the stuff I was doing in between Sundays. It wasn't good, and it wasn't treating me right. I wasn't acting like a Christian Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And Sunday, I was standing up in the choir, singing hard, singing loud. Singing my tenor voice. Singing. Loud. And I was doing some very bad 
I'd stop during the week. This is not sit right. This is not sit right. There came a time where I had to put my spiritual foot down and say no more. Because that's not the way to live the Christian life. If you want to be kept, the first thing you need to do, you have to have a desire to be kept. You have to have a desire to be kept. If you want to be kept, and by kept I mean if you want God to hold you. When you keep something, you hold it to yourself. When you keep something, you want it for your own. You're not going to let anything happen to it because it's yours. I'm keeping it. It's mine. That's what we mean by God keeping you. If you want to be kept, you have to have that desire to be kept. And he will hold you. The Bible says that nobody can pluck you out of his hands. Who is going to come along and pluck you out of God's hand if you want to be there? Nobody. Nobody. So I had to come to the conclusion, look, I want to be kept. The second thing, I had to be passionate about being kept. Passionate. <coughs> By passion, I mean, I had to be excited. First of all, excited that I was a Christian. First of all, the devil was busy trying to make me feel bad every time I did something wrong. Now, raise your hand if you ever done something wrong. Raise your hand if you ever done something wrong and you know you've done something wrong. Raise your hand if you ever done something wrong and you feel so bad about it, you, you just feel, I'm not going back. I'm not going. Sometimes, sometimes I felt so bad I didn't want to go back to church. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. Do you know how it feels? When, first of all, I knew I wasn't the only one dealing with this. Because the other guys in the choir were dealing with the same thing I was. Do you know what it feels like to be, and I was, the only guy in a choir full of girls? That was me. Because all the other guys, they dropped out. Because they said, I can't eat. I'm going to live like this and I don't want to be so, I don't want to be this two-headed monster of, of going to church, singing the choir, and then go out and do my thing. So they just dropped out. I didn't drop out. I stayed there because I said, look, I am a Christian. I'm going through some stuff. I'm having a hard time. But I am a Christian. And I'm standing up there singing. And I can hear the devil whispering. That all these girls is quiet in that all these girls, the only guy in here, you to drop yourself out of this choir. It's no look right. Everybody's staring at you. You're the only guy, man. You're the only guy. I'm listening. I'm listening. But even then, I knew that the devil was a liar. He's a liar. He's going to lie. And so I had to become passionate about being kept. It had to become the single most important thing I want to do. Lord, I want to be kept. Lord, I know who I am. Lord, I want to be kept. I want to be a Christian. Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, I want to follow you. I had to be passionate about it. Then, I had to be patient about being kept. Patient. Along the way, as you're a Christian, you're going to run up against some things. You're going to run up against some people. One of the things I had to deal with early in my Christian life, and off and on throughout my Christian journey, the enemy will pressure. You heard a little bit of Lydia's story about how she has been, in the past years, oppressed. And I know what it means, I know how it feels to be oppressed. When you can sense, when you can feel the enemy's breath on your neck. He's there, and you know, in a room, in a house, by yourself, and you sense another presence. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is no game, this is no game. And you have to still be patient while being kept. 
because you're going to run up against a wall sometimes. Sometimes the enemy is going to give you the desire. You want, you're going to want to give up. You're going to want to walk away. The enemy's going to tell you it's better on the other side. Look at everybody else. Look at everybody else happy. Look at everybody else doing it. And you can be out there living. You can be out there having a good time. You can be out there partying. You can be out there doing your thing. Come on, get on the other side. You're going to see that. You're going to feel that. You're going to sense that. But you have to be patient while you're being kept and understand that you being where you are and staying where you are is the most important thing. You have to already have your mind made up. The last thing, while you're being kept, you have to be vigilant. You have to be vigilant in the process of being kept. Vigilant. Vigilant. Because if you back up, we talked about it a little bit a few Sundays ago. Sometimes it's okay. And the Bible says, stand. Have you done all to stand? That means don't let them push you back. Don't let the enemy push you back into a corner. Stand. Stand. But sometimes. Like you see in the story of David and Goliath, sometimes you have to attack. Goliath came at David, and David could have turned around and ran the other way, but David, as the enemy came toward him, David ran toward him. So sometimes holding your place will get you stomped. Sometimes when the enemy comes, go to him. Go to it. You have to learn how to face your book. Face the thing that gets you down the most. You got to deal with it. And while you're being kept, you have to be vigilant. Your enemy. The Bible says that you have to be vigilant because the devil is walking around like a roaring lion. He's walking around. He's seeking to kill you. See, the devil doesn't want to so much hurt you. The Bible says he wants to kill you. But he can kill you while you sit in your seat. He doesn't have to get you out into the world to kill you. He doesn't have to get you to drink and party and have sex and do everything that you think you want to do to kill you. He can kill you in the pew. Kill you in the pew. How does he kill you in the pew? When anyone can sit under the power of God, anyone, and be unmoved and untouched, they're dying. They're dying. They had this exhibit. They had this exhibit. This exhibit at the Museum of Modern Art. It's still there. I think it's there until sometime next month. And the exhibit, I forget what the name of it is, but there's rain coming from the ceiling. Rain. And when you stand under the rain, you don't get wet. You can walk through the water. You see the water coming down? The water is coming down. It is raining. And you're dry. Dry. Check it out. It's at the Museum of Modern Art. I saw it in the news and I was I couldn't believe it. But the water is coming down. It's raining, raining, and the people are standing there like this. And they walk out dry. It's not a trick. They walk out dry. But I said, you know, that's how it is. That's how it is in church. God's moving. God's spirit is flowing. And we come, and we sit, and we hear, and we go out dry, untouched. And God's spirit was moving, and God's power was present, and yet we leave unmoved, untouched, the same as we came. But you never leave the same as you came. If the power of God is working, 
You never leave the same. If the power of God cannot touch you, you leave a little harder than when you came in. You leave a little further away from God than when you came in. You leave a little bit more depth to the things of God than when you came in. That's why when God is moving, I need to let his power touch you. The Bible says that we are kept by the power of God. So what did I say? Desire. You have to have patience. You got to have it. Desire. And patience. You got to have passion. And you have to have vigilance. You need those four things if you want to be kept. Kept. And if you're sure of who you are, you can be kept. You can be kept. Last thing. All of those four things are put into motion by one thing. Faith. Faith. What does it say? It says who are kept by the power of God. So that tells you you can't keep yourself. You can't keep yourself. As soon as you try to keep yourself, you're going to fall down. You can't keep yourself. You can't try to look good. You can't try to be good. You can't try to be a good Christian. You cannot do it. You are kept by the power of God. Through faith. Do you believe that God has the power to keep you? Do you believe? Do you believe that he has that power? If you go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, in chapter 2, chapter 1, rather, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, and verse number 12. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. What is it? If you're a child of God, what is it that you have committed to him until that day when he comes to take you out of here? Your soul. Your soul, your good self. Lord, I give you, I have nothing to give you. Nothing in my hands do I bring. Simply to the cross do I cling. What do I commit to you? Me. That's all I have. That's all I have. And he takes you just as you are. So, do you want to be kept? Do you believe that you can be kept? She has 10 years and I can say she has 10 years under her belt. That'll make it sound like this is something that she did. She did some things along the way, but she has been kept by the power of God. You can't, she can't deny it. God has kept her. I can say these. I get off track 35, 40 years, something like that. It's nothing to do with me. There's nothing to do with me. Trust me. If I'm still here today, if I'm still naming the name of Jesus, if I can still lift up my hand and worship God through all the stuff that I've been through, it's not because of me. It's because I have been kept by the power of God. I've been kept. And if you want to be kept, if you want to live with Jesus, in spite of whatever you're dealing with in your life, in spite of what the devil might be telling you, in spite of what you're dealing with, if you want to be kept, held, he will keep you. He will hold you to hate. He will give you the power to deal with stuff. He will give you the power 
I see some stuff. Sorry, not allow me. I, think I see some stuff. I see people come and go. But I have been kept by God's mighty power. You can be kept. You can be kept. You really want to serve him? Step out and serve God because he will keep you. By his hands, it's for me. You're here tonight. You're a young person. And you really don't know which direction you are going. You're in, you're out, you're up, you're down. You're left, you're right. I am a Christian. I might be a Christian. I don't know if I'm a Christian. I don't think I'm a Christian. You don't know where you are. I would be, I would not be doing my job tonight if I did not give you an opportunity to get yourself right with God. You can be careful. You've heard her testimony. You may have heard my testimony before. You've heard other people's testimony. You know what God can do. You've heard it over and over and over and over again. Yet, you still lack that faith. You still lack that assurance. You still don't know. You said, oh, you don't know. You don't know what I'm going. You don't know what I see. You don't know what I'm doing. You just don't know how I feel. You don't. I don't. I don't. God knows. God knows. Tell him. You can talk to him. And he will hear you. And he will respond to you. If you hear this night, and you need Jesus in your life, whether you are saved or whether you're not saved, if you need Jesus tonight, I'm going to ask you very quickly to lift up your hand. Very quickly, just lift up your hand. I, I just need more of Jesus. I need to know that He's keeping me. I, I don't have that assurance that I'm being kept. I just feel so... I don't know why I feel the way I feel. I am a Christian. I should be a Christian. But I think I am, but I don't know. If you're not sure that you're walking with Jesus tonight... I should lift up your hand. We're just going to pray. We're going to let you go. But you need to know where you stand with Jesus tonight. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. You need to know where you stand with Jesus right now. Right now. one who would say, I'm not sure. Is there someone else? I'm just not sure. So we talk about faith. It's about faith. This desire, this passion, and this vigilance. All these things come by faith. So I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith. I want you to stand up right where you are. Don't worry about anybody else around you. Just stand up. You remember a time when Jesus was much more important in your life than he is right now. Somehow you've allowed the world to creep in. Somehow you've allowed different things, different people, and whatever it is to creep into your life, but you're just not where you used to be. You're not where you know you need to be. You're not where you should be. I want you to stand right where you are. I want you to stand right where you are. And we're going to pray. Because God can keep you. God can keep you. I can 
people say, I, I can understand men the things that I think some of you are dealing with. But I know that God will keep you. You kept me. I'm not special. Trust me, I'm not special. You kept me. Because I wanted, I wanted Jesus. That's, that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted Jesus more than anything else. And even when I messed up, and I messed up a lot, even when I messed up, I kept crawling back. Because I knew that's where I needed to be. I'm supposed to be with Jesus. And even when the devil gets me down, even when I do what I don't, what I'm not supposed to do, I still come back to Jesus. Because that's where I belong. That's where I belong. Is there anyone else before we pray? The Spirit is here. The Spirit is here. And you can touch it right now. Right now. Those of you who are standing here, I just want you to lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands right now. Sign of surrender. That's what it means. You're saying, Lord, I give myself away. Lord, I give you me. I got nothing else to give you. I can't buy it from you. I can't purchase it from you. So Lord, I surrender my, I give myself to you. That's it. I got nothing else to give you except myself. My sinning self. My depressed self, my oppressed self. I just give you myself. Just the way I am. Take me, Jesus. And I just begin to talk to him. Just open up your mouth and begin to talk to him. If you know what you need, just begin to talk to Jesus. Begin to talk to Jesus. Just begin to talk to Jesus. Oh, does he know what's on your mind? Does he know what's in your heart? Does he know what you're dealing with? Absolutely. But once again, an act of faith, you have to open up your mouth. Speak to him yourself. Tell Jesus what you're going through. Tell Jesus what you're feeling that you think nobody else knows. Tell Jesus about it. Talk to Him. You have to express yourself. Don't speak to Him in your heart. You're in God's house. You can open up your mouth in God's house. God will keep you. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know sometimes you don't see the way up. Sometimes you don't know whether you're coming or going. Oppression. I'm still going to talk very much about oppression. And how many people come in. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Open up your mouth, begin to talk to him, begin to praise God. As you talk, begin to praise God. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for being there. Thank you for who he is. Thank you for his power. Thank you. Begin to worship him. Tell him that he's worthy. Lord, hold us, surround 
us from yourself, Lord Jesus. Cover us under your wings, Lord Jesus. See that no hurt on the name that comes our way, Lord Jesus. Lord, the enemy is coming in like a flood. He's coming in like a flood, but Lord, we trust you that your spirit is going to lift up a standard against him.
things. But I'm going to keep my eyes forward because there's no other place. There's no other way. There's no other place except through Jesus Christ. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your awesomeness, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for those who came out tonight. We thank you, God, for those who participated. We thank you, God, for the word, oh God. We thank you, God, for the testimony. We thank you, God, Lord, for just your greatness, God. Oh God, you are awesome, God. You are mighty, God. It's not about us, oh God. It's not about what we can do. It's not about our talents, our abilities, or who we know on this earth. But God, it's about if we have a relationship with you, God. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you are mighty. You are holy. You deserve our worship. You deserve our praise. You deserve to be lifted up. You deserve to be put on a pedestal, God, Lord. We thank you, God, Lord. And we thank you, God, for your blessings. We pray, God, for the whole God. Jesus, hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus.